asking about, about the rates of the reaction and their mechanism. So these are the two topics which we'll be doing there in the chemical kinetics. And uh, uh, in entire this chapter, we'll be again and again talking about the rates of the reaction. And we'll be talking different re uh, reaction examples and their mechanism. Now, see, as I already told you, in chemical kinetics, we'll be talking about the reaction rate and their mechanism. And the kinesis is a Greek word, which means movement. So there is change. So thermodynamically, you can state that the feasibility of any reaction, but uh, whether it will be possible or not, or sorry, 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 what will be the speed of that reaction that we can can't uh, uh, study there, there in thermodynamics. So there was need of a, a branch of chemistry, which uh, can tell us about the rate of the reaction, about the uh, speed of the reaction. So for that only chemical kinetics was uh, introduced. Now see, uh, rate of reaction, reactions can be fast, moderate and slow, fast reactions, photochemical reactions, their speed will be 10 to the power minus 12 to 10 to the power minus 16 seconds. And photochemical reactions are fastest chemical reactions, vision reactions also. Ionic reactions are also fast reaction, ionic or inorganic reactions, their speed will be 10 to the power minus 6 seconds. Fine, uh, because ionic bonds are weaker and irreversible reactions are also fast. So we have uh, we have classified them like this. Moderate reaction, most of the reactions which we'll be discussing there, there in the chemical kinetics, uh, sorry, there in the chemistry uh, are uh, moderate reactions and uh, their speed will neither be too slow nor too fast. Slow reactions, erosion is an example of slow reactions, usually organic reactions or covalent reactions or molecular reactions are slow reaction. Uh, and uh, with the time, concentration of reactant always decreases this red line and concentration of product always increases. Concentration of product always increases with time and concentration of reactant always decreases with time. So now uh, see this red line. Now see this red line. Now see this red line. This red line is going down now means minus slope and this blue line is going up that is products that is plus slope so the concentration of reactant with time decreases rate of disappearance of reactant and rate of appearance of products that means the concentration of product with time increases so this all is already done this is graphical representation and now now <clears throat> Uh, you know, rate of reaction can be expressed uh, uh, like this uh, dt upon uh, dx, sorry, dx upon dt, dx that is concentration of the material and dt is the time taken. So in case of reactant, it will always be minus and in case of product, it will always be plus. So, so like this, you can see this is one uh, one exact rate of reaction, another exact rate of reaction, this is concentration and this is time now. So at this point of time, this point of time, this is one concentration and time, this is another concentration at time, this is third concentration at time. So these are three different exact rates of reactions. And the, these three exact rates of reaction combine together to form a average rate of reaction, average rate of reaction. So like this, uh, uh, just a minute. So, uh, uh, in this way, you can express uh, uh, average, as I already told you, average rate of reaction and exact rate of reaction. Average rate of reaction will be del X upon del T and exact rate of reaction will be dx upon dt. If it is reactant, then you will always be writing minus and if it is product, then you will always be writing plus. So that is what the exact and average is. This all is already done. So uh, more than one uh, exact rates will combine together to form a average rate. So now, average. now this, uh, now see uh, this example they have given N2 plus rise H2 reversible twice in H3 dx upon dt is equal to minus dn2 active mass of n2 upon dt. Why minus? Because it is reactant. 
fine here it is written minus 1 by 3 here one moles was there na here three moles so to equate them this is one so you have to multiply this by 1 by 3 then only this will be equal to this one so that's why you have written minus 1 by 3 and here you will be writing plus 1 by 2 why plus because it is product why half because here it is 2 so this you have taken one so you have to make this also one so how that can be done by multiplying it 1 by 3 and this by 1 by 2 here minus here minus here it will be plus so rate of disappearance of reactant and rate of appearance of product this all is already done so like that they have written here for but here what method you have adopted in the, compared to that here method is different here you have taken 2 so that 2 you have taken as 1 this is 2 this 2 you have taken as 1 so this 2 will also be taken as 1 and what about this one here it is 1 so you have to multiply this by 2 then only it will become 2 Become equal to SO two and SO three. SO two is reactant, so minus O two is also reactant, so minus SO three is product, so plus. So D active mass of SO three upon D T. So if reaction is reversible, then di at dynamic equilibrium, rate of forward reaction becomes equal to the rate of backward reaction. Rate of forward backward reaction becomes equal to the rate of rate of forward reaction. The rate of backward reaction. So if one is forward is plus, then backward will be minus. Both will be opposite. If one is plus, then second will be minus ten. So in this way, the result net rate of the reaction will become zero. In case of reversible reaction, net rate of the reaction will always be equal to zero. Find this all zero. This uh, here reactant uh, is this one, and this one is product. And um, delta T is the change in time T two upon T one final minus initial final concentration minus initial concentration final pressure sorry final pressure minus initial pressure will be change in pressure or change in you can say uh, sorry uh, pressure I have said final concentration of product minus initial concentration of product that is change in concentration of product this is change in concentration of reactant final concentration of reactant minus initial concentration of reactant so. Uh, in this way, we will come to know about the rate of the reaction. Then, units of rate of reaction is always concentration uh, and time. Concentration is mole per liter, and time is per second. So, concentration per time is the unit of rate. So, that is concentration is mole per liter. So, mole per liter that is mole liter inverse minus uh, and second inverse. in gas in gaseous reactions it will always be atmosphere second inverse uh, so this all is already done so we won't be discussing about this dependence on rate uh, dependence of rate on concentration with time jo with time concentration of reactant and product changes so uh, it depends upon temperature also it depends upon temperature also rate of reaction depends upon concentration also that is what rate law or rate equation or rate expression is rate of reaction is directly proportional to the concentration of reactant rate of reaction is directly proportional to the concentration of reactants more the concentration of reactants more will be the rate of the reaction then what next is rate expression and rate constant this all is already done a small a is a, a concentration stoichiometric coefficient Stoichiometric coefficient, stoichiometric coefficient, stoichiometric coefficient. So this all it is already done. There I explained you difference between A, B, and X Y. A is equal. A can be equal to X or can't be equal to X. So like this, this all is already done. So here it is written. So you can go through this all, and if still some doubt is there, you can ask me. Now this example also discussed. Here you have written rate of the reaction is equal to K into N O to the power two and O to the power one. What does it means? Means its uh, uh, concentration to the power one is uh, affecting the rate of reaction, and its concentration of two to the power two is affecting the rate of reaction. So this is differential form of this rate e expression. D R upon D T is equal to K N O to mass of N O to the power two upon O two. so this all is already done now we'll be talking about the uh, differences or you can say comparison between r and k 
rate constant, rate of reaction, and the rate constant. Comparison between rate constant and rate of reaction. Rate of reaction is variable, while rate constant is constant. One reaction can have only one rate constant value irrespective of the temperature, pressure, concentration, etc. But uh, R value, rate of reaction, changes with change in temperature, change in concentration, change in pressure, etc. And rate of reaction is directly pushed to the concentration of reactant, while the rate constant depends only upon temperature. Fine? Because forward and backward direction reactions are having two different optimum temperatures, and one temperature can favor only reaction they are in one direction so with the change in temperature there will be change in k and it is temperature only which can affect the rate constant no other physical factor can ever affect the rate constant value so now this all is over this is already done and uh, as i already told you r is directly proportional to uh, concentration of reactants so now you can say R is equal to K into concentration of reactants. So R is directly proportional to K. Bigger value of K means rate of reaction will be more, means that reaction will be fast. So questions, they can ask you from this. So you have to be very cautious. You have to be very cautious. Now see, and now see, uh, I think uh, we didn't discuss this also now. So from here only we will be starting. So types of reactions uh, on the basis of order. So we will be classifying reactions on the basis of the order, on the basis of the order. Fine. So see uh, negative order reactions. Uh, negative order reactions, this reaction twice O3, this O3 converts into ozone. We know uh, ozone continuously converts into oxygen now, and uh, uh, that is what the, yes, sir. yeah, that is what the uh, reaction takes place there in presence of, uh, uh, in presence of that sunlight now, UV radiation, ultraviolet radiation. So UV radiations are uh, responsible for this conversion of ozone into oxygen. And that ozone layer is responsible for stopping, or you can say protecting you from the harmful ultraviolet radiations. So that uh, ozone layer acts as a blanket to save you. And for the depletion of this ozone layer, chlorofluorocarbons are responsible. Chlorofluorocarbons are responsible you know to protect this uh, to save this ozone layer in brazil rio de janeiro there was a summit it was known it was a, a initiative of rajiv gandhi prime minister of india at that time uh, because of his uh, initiative this earth summit uh, happened there there in rio de janeiro that is brazil so they can ask you about that too and the name of that uh, summit was Arthur Summit. So Arthur Summit, Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, Rajiv Gandhi. So it was uh, it was the first initiative for the protection of this uh, uh, ozone layer. Uh, that ozone layer is responsible for protecting us from harmful radiations of sun, ultraviolet radiations of sun. So this is a reaction in which ozone converts into oxygen. If you see, if we consider ozone, then see <coughs> this ozone order of reaction on the basis of ozone that is experimentally proved is two. And order of reaction based on this oxygen is minus one. So order of reaction with respect to oxygen is minus one and order of reaction with respect to ozone is two. It is experimentally proved. Since the, uh, since the order of reaction with respect to ozone is 2, so that's why you will be writing here half. And why minus half? Because it is reacting, so minus half. And uh, 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 with, respect to, with respect to ozone, 
that is rate of reaction is equal to k into f2 mass of o2 to 3 to the power 2 upon f2 mass of o2 so with respect to o2 order of reaction is minus 1 that is what you have written k into f2 mass of o3 to the power 2 and f2 mass of o2 to the power minus 1 minus 1 experimentally achieved order of reaction with reference to o2 is minus 1 that is what i have written here so this is uh, O3 is changing into oxygen and oz uh, ozone and that ozone, oxygen and uh, uh, atomic oxygen and that atomic oxygen reacts with ozone again to form twice or if we combine them together, this and this will be cancelled and 2O3 will be giving you 3O2, 2O3 will be giving you 3O2, that is what we have written here. So in this way, in this way, uh, this is an example of negative order reactions. In this way, you can explain the negative order reactions. Negative order reactions and decomposition of ozone is an example of this negative order reaction. Negative order reaction, this example, this is example of negative order reaction, decomposition of ozone. Yes. So now we'll be going to next one. Just remember this. this. This is very, very important example. So now we'll see the next negative order after this negative order example. Now we'll go to the zero order reactions. Now we'll go to the zero order reactions. What zero order reactions are? Zero order reactions. See, as I told you there in the beginning that uh, concentration independent reactions or photochemical reactions are zero order reactions. There, there zero order reactions. These uh, zero order reactions. Now, my voice is clear? Yes, sir. Okay, fine. Yes, so, zero order reactions are concentration independent reactions, means their concentration, concentration of reactants will not affect the rate of the reaction. For example, in your house, so much oxygen is there, so much carbon dioxide is there in night they are in your room, so much carbon dioxide is there, but if some plant is there, there in your room, then it won't be doing photosynthesis. Why? Because there is no sunlight for that photosynthesis process. You know, without sunlight, photosynthesis can't occur. Na? So in the absence of sunlight, photosynthesis won't be taking place. So photosynthesis, for photosynthesis, oxygen is important then, sorry, Sunlight is important than carbon dioxide. Without sunlight, if so much of CO2 is there, then also photosynthesis will not be taking place. What does it mean? It means concentration of reactant. Here in this case, it is CO2. Concentration of reactant is not affecting the rate of the reaction. It is sunlight only because of that only that reaction can take place. So photosynthesis, vision reactions, or all those reactions which takes place there in presence of sunlight, all those reactions which takes place in presence of sunlight are examples of zero order reaction. Zero order reaction means, see here how you'll be expressing it, R is directly proportional to, R is directly proportional to the concentration of reactants. But if it is zero order reaction, then you will be putting it here zero. So R is equal to K and this concentration of reactants to the power one will become one. So this R will be equal to R will be equal to K. R will be equal to K. R will be equal to K. So rate of reaction in case of zero order reaction will be independent from the concentration of reactants. So that is why these reactions are called concentration independent reactions. Zero order reactions are very rare. And uh, if sunlight is there, then only these reactions can take space. And uh, reactions, so that is photochemical reaction, photosynthesis and vision reactions, that is retinal isomerization. And then next example is H2 plus Cl2 that takes place in presence of sunlight. That is also an example of photochemical reaction. Then reactions which are taking place at the surface of metal, 
are also examples of photochemical reactions. If metal surface is not there, then that reaction won't be taking place. So it means that concentration of reactant is not so important. If metal surface is there, if metal catalyst is there, then only that reaction will be taking place. Then only that reaction will be taking place. So reaction which takes place in presence of sunlight, reactions which are taking place at the metal surface are concentration independent reactions. In case of photochemical reactions, sunlight is important. And in case of reactions taking place at the metal surface, metal surface is important. If that metal surface or sunlight won't be there, whatever quantity of reactants are present, then also that reaction won't be taking place. So reactions which are taking place at the metal surface, see examples are given here. And these reactions are examples of heterogeneous reactions because see, this is gas, this is solid. These are gases. So solid and gases means heterogeneous reactions. Here also HI, H2, I2 and AU is solid. N2 is GAD, then again here it is solid and then these gases. So these reactions that is decomposition of NH3 into N2 and H2, decomposition of HI into H2 and I2, decomposition of N2O into N2 and O2 in presence of platinum, in presence of gold and in presence of platinum or molybdenum or wolfram, all these reaction takes place there on the surface of metal. And that is why these all are examples of zero order reactions. C, still you should not be satisfied with all these examples. You have to look for some more examples. You must be looking for some other examples too. So, so if something new is there, there in examination, then also you'll be there in a position too. But here you can easily judge gas and solid. So on the surface of matter. But here, if they have not written this H new, if they have not written this H new, then it will be difficult for you to handle. Why? Because without this H new, you will never come to know that this reaction is taking place there in sunlight. See, I have given you these examples, so you'll be comfortable there in these reactions, but so many more reactions are there, which takes place in presence of sunlight. So that also you should remember how many more reactions are there, which are taking place in presence of sunlight. And accordingly, you should write this one. Now see, yes. now see, uh, we'll go to the, so these are all our examples of, we have till now, we have done fractional order reactions. Only one example for that was there. That was decomposition of ozone into oxygen. And now second example, second uh, topic for this uh, uh, zero order reaction, zero order reactions are concentration independent reactions, reactions which are taking place at the surface of metal and reaction which takes place there in presence of the light are examples of zero order reactions. So we should remember this reactions. Hatogen heterogeneous reactions are heterogeneous reactions are examples of zero order reactions. Fine. Zero order reaction. Yeah. Yes, sir. Now, see, we'll go to the next one. Now we'll go to the next one. Next slide. See here. See here. Uh, since you are talking about uh, uh, photochemical reactions, so what rest reactions are? Reactions which take space there in presence of light are called photo reactions. So in every reaction, light won't be there. Na. Then what these reactions are? These reactions are called thermal or chemical reactions. Thermal reactions means those reaction takes place in presence of temperature in presence of heat and these reaction takes place in presence of light both are chemical reactions both are chemical reaction but one is taking place in presence of light that is called photochemical reaction and those reaction which takes place there in presence of temperature and in presence of heat are called thermal reactions <coughs> now from where you will get energy that is activation energy for photochemical reaction for photochemical reaction activation energy means suppose you want to purchase a car and for that car certain value you have to pay now then only you will be getting that car so like that to start any chemical reaction certain minimum amount of energy will be required and that energy is called energy. activation energy that active that energy is called activation yes. energy so activation energy, energy. In case of photochemical reactions you will be getting from radiations from where you will get activation energy in case of photochemical reactions from radiations only and from radiations. collisions 
from pollution or heat, you will be getting activation energy for thermal or chemical reaction. In case of photochemical reaction, activation energy will be getting from radi from radiations, and in case of radiations. thermal reactions, you will be getting energy from molecular pollution. Mole molecules will be continuously Pollution. colliding now, and because of the, that pollution, certain energy will be uh, released. That energy is called activation energy. One molecule will be accepting that energy, and second will be losing energy. So, so that is called molecular collision, and that uh, molecular collision will be responsible for providing activation energy in case of thermal or chemical reactions. Photochemical reactions are temperature independent reactions, and uh, thermal or chemical reactions are temperature dependent. Means if there will be change in temperature, then the rate of the reaction will get changed. And here, if there is change in temperature, there will not be any change in the rate, the rate of the reaction. Because of photochemical reactions, there will be increase in free energy, and here there will be decrease in free energy. Since they, there will be fall of radiations on the surface of, on the on the reactant molecules, so there will be increase in free energy. What is the meaning of free energy? Free energy means available energy to do some useful work. Available energy to do to do some useful work that is called that is called free energy that is called free energy. So free energy is the available amount of energy to do some useful work. So and there since there is no source of energy, so that is why there will be decrease in free energy due to this thermal uh, there in uh, thermal reactions or chemical reactions. So here you compared photochemical reactions and thermal reactions. So what is the difference between them? So we should know this too. Now you'll be going to the next slide. You discussed uh, fractional order reactions. You discussed, sorry, you discussed negative order reactions. You discussed zero order reactions. Now this fractional order reaction. You should remember all these examples, which reaction comes under zero order reaction, negative order reaction, and what are the examples of fractional order reaction? See, this is CHCl3. This CHCl3, this CHCl3, this CHCl3 is changing, is reacting with Cl2 and changing into CCl4 and HCl. Here, from this reaction, molecularity will be two. What about order of reaction? that you can't come to know. If they'll be providing you data, then only you will come to know about the order of the reaction. So according to this molecularity, average rate of reaction will be equal to K into FP mass of CHCl3 into FP mass of Cl2. And this order of reaction, that is exact rate of reaction, there this is written, K into FP mass of CHCl3 into active mass of Cl2 to the power half. So this is one and this is half. So one plus half will be three by two. So order of reaction, order of reaction here will be three by two. So uh, in case of chlorination of chlorine, what you will say? Sorry, in case of chlorination of chloroform, I have said chlorine. Chlorination of chloroform, chlorination of chloroform, chlorination of chloroform, C. Here I'll explain you this one thing. What the oxidation of number of carbon is here? Oxidation number of carbon here is plus two. And what about this carbon? It is plus four. So there is increase in oxidation number now. What does it mean? Oxidation. So here oxidation of chloroform is taking place. Just please remember this. Oxidation number, increase in oxidation number is called oxidation. Here increase in oxidation number of carbon is there that's why there is oxidation or addition of electronegative element or addition of non-metal will always be an oxidation reaction so here this chloroform is getting oxidized into ccl4 so this oxidation of chloroform is an example of fractional order reaction now you see one more example. Just remember this all manner. Whatever questions they can ask you, I have written everything. I have written average rate of reaction. I have written exact rate of reaction. I have written molecularity. I have written order of reaction also. So everything is done. 
Now, second example for this fractional order reaction, that reaction is uh, uh, pyrolysis or thermal decomposition of acetaldehyde, thermal decomposition of pyrolysis of acetaldehyde, you will get CH4 and CO, both are there in gaseous form. This mechanism was given by rice hersfeld mechanism. This mechanism was given by rice hersfeld mechanism and according to which the concentration of acetaldehyde must be 3 by 2. V, that is R, that is rate of the reaction. R is equal to K into F mass of CH3CHO to the power 3 by 2. So order of reaction will also be 3 by 2. This is experimentally proved and was proved by rice hersfeld That's why you have written there rice hersfeld mechanism. So according to which concentration of acetaldehyde affecting the rate of reaction must be 3 by 2. <coughs> must be 1 and half. So this was example of fractional order reactions. Now see, now see, after 10 minutes, this class will be uh, stopped and then we'll reconnect again because after every 40 minutes, we have to reconnect. So please take care. So now, uh, now first order, first you said negative order reactions, first you discussed negative order reactions, first you discussed the negative order, then zero order, then fractional order. These three are over fractional order reactions. These three are over. Now the fourth one, now the fourth one is first order reactions. Now the fourth one is first order reactions. All nuclear reactions, all nuclear reactions means reactions which are taking place in the nucleus of sun or any nuclear reaction. Nuclear reactions, here you can classify reactions into two classes. One is nuclear reactions and second is chemical reactions. In chemical reactions only electron takes part and in nuclear reactions, all subatomic particles can take part. All subatomic particles can take part. Subatomic particles can take part, including electron too. But if only electron is taking place part there in any chemical reaction, then such reactions are called chemical reactions. But if all subatomic particles, including electron, electron, proton, neutron, mesons, pi ions, so, are so many more, then such reactions are called nuclear reactions. In nuclear reactions from beryllium, we will be getting carbon. New elements will be formed. But in chemical reactions, no new elements can be formed. N2 plus thrice H2 will be giving you twice NH3. Left hand side nitrogen, right hand side nitrogen, left hand side hydrogen, right hand side hydrogen. But here left hand side beryllium and right hand side carbon or nitrogen or oxygen or anything else can be there. So in nuclear reactions, new elements will be formed but in chemical reactions, no new elements will ever be formed. In nuclear reactions, enormous amount of energy will be released. And in chemical reactions, energy released or energy absorbed will be very, very, very less in compared to nuclear reactions. In case of nuclear reactions, tremendous, huge amount of energy change takes place. While in chemical reactions, in compared to nuclear reactions, it will be very, very less. In nuclear reactions, no sorry, in nuclear reactions, new elements will be formed and in chemical reactions, no new elements will ever be formed. So this is about nuclear reactions and chemical reactions. In previous slide, in previous slide, you discussed about, in previous slide, you discussed about photochemical reactions and thermal reactions too. Here you discussed about nuclear reactions and chemical reactions. So now here in this uh, slide, we will be talking about first order reactions. As I told you, all nuclear reactions or radioactivity. All nuclear reactions or radioactivity are examples of this first order reaction. Many more examples for this first order reactions are there that also we'll discuss. This is done all natural and artificial rate to decay of unstable nuclei. 
that's first order mechanism see here it is radium radium is changing into radon and helium so it is so it is it is first order reaction rate is equal to k into r a to the power 1 only concentration of reactant is only one so order of reaction will be one c rate of reaction is equal to k into concentration of reactant if it is negative then it will be negative order reaction if it is negative then negative order if it is zero then zero order reaction if it is fractional then fractional order reaction if it is one then first order reaction if it is two then second order if it is three then third order reactions more than third order reaction is not possible because reactants come can one reactant when one reactant combines then the attack of the second molecule of the reactant will always be to the perpendicular of that of the first one so direction of each molecule colliding with another reactant molecule will always be perpendicular so this will be perpendicular to this and this perpendicular to this will be something new so only three dimensions can be possible fourth dimension is not possible length breadth and height so order of reaction maximally can be three only because from fourth side from fourth direction there is no fourth direction only three dimensions are there left length height and breadth l b h so only three directions can be possible x axis y axis and z axis there is no fourth axis so that is why order of reaction maximum of any reactant molecule for any reactant molecule can only be three more than three order of reaction is not yet known is not yet possible so uh, first order reactions hydrogenation of ethene see this is ethene hydrogenation or and you will get ethane that is also first order reaction only the concentration of c2h4 will be affecting the rate of reaction concentration of h2 will not be affecting the rate of this hydrogenation of ethene that's why you won't be considering that so hydrogenation of ethene is an example of first order reaction this is over this is also over then third decomposition of n2o5 n2o and h2o2 the composition of n2o5 n2o and h2o2 are first are examples of first order reactions now see if there is decomposition of n2o5 that takes place there in presence that takes place into no2 and o2 how it happens in first step how it happens that we should know that in second case n2o is changing into n2 and o molecularity will be 2 and order of reaction will be 1 because in slowest step number of reactant molecule is only 1 number of reactant molecules in overall balanced chemical equation that is molecularity that is average rate of reaction that can only be decided by law of mass action and the number of reactant molecules there in the slowest step is the order of reaction there in the rate determining step is order of reaction and that is exact or instantaneous rate of the reaction too so see this is overall balanced chemical equation here number of reactant molecule is 2 so molecularity is 2 but here see in this slowest step it takes place in two two steps this is first step and this is second step in first step number that is slow step number of reactant molecule is 1 so order of reaction will be 1 so you will get n2 plus o2 o then n2 o plus o this is fast step and you will get n2 and o2 here reactant molecules are 2 but here it is 1 and that is slow step so that is rate determining step so that is why order of reaction will be 1 if you'll see this case if you'll see this case in this case rate average rate will be equal to the k into active mass of n2o to the power 2 and exact rate will be equal to k into n2o to the power 1 only this is order of reaction this is molecularity this is average rate of reaction this is exact rate of reaction this is rate of reaction with respect to law of mass action and this is rate of reaction with respect to rate law expression so this is rate of reaction in first terms of daughter. rate law expression and this is rate of reaction in terms of law of mass action ha huh, sir tell me yeah asta please tell me 
Lakshita or Asta? Who was Nothing, asking? sir. Asta, Lakshita, you were asking me something? No, sir. Fine. Is it clear? This all is okay? Yes. That's sir. very important. Again and yes, again, sir. there in this chapter, either you will be talking about the rate of the reaction, that is average rate of reaction or uh, exact rate of reaction. You will be talking about the molecularity or order of reaction. You will be talking about the law of mass action and rate law expression. See, what I told you, either you will be talking about the average rate of reaction and exact rate of reaction, one point, or you will be talking about molecularity and order of reaction, or you will be talking about law of mass action and rate law expression. So these three points there in this entire chapter we will be talking about. So this whole chapter is only about these three things. Mechanism is C here we have written mechanism. This was mechanism. This is step is slow and this is step is fast. This is what mechanism is. So like this, we'll be talking about uh, mechanism of many, many such reactions. And from there you will come to them about average rate of reaction and rate law expression, uh, exact rate of reaction, or you'll come to know about 